Morning everyone, how are we all? Trust you all keeping well and keeping safe. A country preacher sold a donkey to a friend and he told him that the donkey was trained to go when the rider said praise the Lord and to stop when the rider said Amen. The buyer mounted the donkey and he commanded the donkey praise the Lord and the donkey shot off just like a rocket. The startled rider panicked uh, uh, and he's going, whoa, whoa, he was screaming, the donkey was heading straight for his cliff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. At last, uh, at the last second he remembered what the, the minister's instructions were. Amen, he shouted. And the donkey screeched to a halt right on the edge of the cliff. As the owner peered over the precipice, he wiped his brow and sighed, praise the Lord, whoa. Okay then, praise God. This, today, this is week 16 in our series, The Church That Jesus Is Building. And our text this morning will be taken from Psalm 67, verses 5 through 7, and Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 29 through 39. Let me just read together Psalm 67 first. It says, May the people praise you, God. May all the people praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Let's just pray. Father, this morning, I thank you for your goodness and grace and mercy towards us. And I pray, Lord, as we've gathered this morning, that you would uh, speak to us as we open our ears, open our eyes, and open our hearts to hear what you would say to us. God, we give you praise in Jesus' wonderful name. And we all said... Amen. Praise God. This morning, I want us to see, uh, what I want us to see is that praise and thankfulness are very important to us as we build the church that Jesus is building. So much so that the scripture we've just read tells us that first comes praise and thankfulness, then comes fruitfulness, harvest and blessing. This is very important for us to grasp in our lives and uh, that thanks and praise always come first in the world system it's when we've received something that we generally give praise and thanks and that's fine for example you know when you're given gifts and you say thank you but when you look to look at this scripture we see something else thankfulness brings fruitfulness harvest and blessing it doesn't say be thankful when you've seen the increase of blessing but it says give Give praise and thanks to God beforehand. I've entitled this morning's uh, message, Jesus is building a church of praise. A thankful heart feeds and blesses many. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 15. This illustrates to us the power of praise and, and giving thanks before the event. Let me just read to us beginning at verse 29. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the, the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the, the lame walking and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, Where could we get enough bread in this, re in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have, Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fishes. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves of fish, uh, seven loaves on the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was four thousand men, besides men, women, and children. After Jesus had sent the crowd away, he got into the boat and went to the vicinity of Magadan. 
Without doubt, here, we see the, this principle in action. Thankfulness brought about tremendous fruitfulness and blessing. From seven loaves and a, a few small fish, we see thousands fed and blessed. In fact, the scripture says they all ate and were satisfied. And what I want to do today is give us some insight from this situation, this great miracle. I want us to see that thankfulness and praise have a vital part to play in our needs being met, especially before the event. In other words, we need to be thankful to God now for the things we haven't received yet. When we do, we're displaying our faith and our trust in God our Father by saying, Father, thank you. Father, we praise you because our miracle, our need is on the way. Notice with me, the very first thing that Jesus did, and this is my first point this morning, he gives thanks. He gives thanks. Verse 36, it says, Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he brought them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. And when? Before any increase, Jesus thanked God. Let me say, in this church, we will give thanks first. Thanking God is something we should be doing constantly, not just when we receive something, not just when things are going well, but we must be thanking God continuously in our lives. And I put it to us that this was not a good situation as situations go, if you or I had to feed a few thousand people, I don't think we'd have, we'd have thought, great, I've got all I need. But Jesus here shows us a tremendous truth. Thankfulness produces fruitfulness and increase. And let me say, Jesus is building the church and he is building a thankful people, praise God. Which leads me into my second point this morning, to always give thanks for what you have. Again in verse 36, let's read. Then he took the seven loaves and, fish, and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. In your life, you may not have been blessed with much, but you have been blessed with something, so thank God for it. He'll do the rest in your life, in my life. It's something... We, we all need to hear, you can do more with what you do have than you can with what you don't have. Did you get that? You can do more with what you do have than you can with what you don't have. Jesus did exactly that. He looked at what he had and then he thanked Father, the rest is written before us. Might sound simple, but it's true. If we continually thank God for what we do have, we will see increase as he miraculously brings harvest to our lives and to our needs. Notice, God always meets our needs and not our wants. So third point this morning, give thanks for what you have and then use it. Again in verse 36, let's read. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. Go with what you've got. Then watch God do the rest. At work, at home, at church, in your own ministry. Thank God for what he's given you and then use it, praise God. That is exactly what Jesus did. He broke them and gave them to the disciples and they in turn gave them to the people. Incredible increase from Jesus to the disciples, from the disciples to the people. Jesus didn't hang around moaning about what he didn't have. He did the opposite. He went with what he had. And many of us may have looked at what we had and thought, there's no way I can do anything. I ain't got much. But let me say, Jesus says to us, break what you have and release it to others. Distribute your gifting given to you by God. Give thanks to God for your life for your ministry, for your situation. Give thanks for your life, for your ministry, your situation to him, and he will bless and feed many more people than you thought imaginable. Which leads me into our fourth point. By giving thanks for what you have and using what you've been given, you will have more 
than enough. Verse 37. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. When we use what we've got, instead of moaning about what we haven't got, then we'll see increase. Which reminds me of uh, the widow of Zarephath. And we read this in, in 1 Kings and chapter 17. And let's just read it together this morning. It says this in verse 7. Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar that I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called, And bring me a piece of uh, uh, please, a piece of bread. Uh, uh, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replies, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as I, as I have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son for this is what the Lord your God of Israel says the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land so she went away and did as Elijah had told her so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family let me say, when we, when we thank God for what we have, we, when we don't hold back, God intervenes and brings harvest to our lives. A thankful heart, let me say, is a productive heart. A heart that, it, that is thankful and willing to do what it takes to see increase. And finally, uh, this morning, uh, number five, what you get back is greater than what you give. Verse 37 again, they all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. And notice with me, thankfulness brought about a massive increase. In fact, they went from seven loaves to seven basketfuls. Thanking God for what we have, then giving uh, to the needs of others will always bring increase in our lives. It may not come in a financial way. It may not come straight away. But when we pick up the pieces, I want to say that we'll have more than what we started with. Praise God. Remember today, giving thanks and praise to God is massively important to us in our lives. Giving praise and thanks to Jesus opens up the harvest to us. It opens up the tremendous blessings that God has in store for all of us. You think about this for a moment as we close this morning. The day you made a commitment to Christ, the day you accepted Jesus into your life, you thank God, Father, I thank you. You thanked him for his son. You thanked him for his son who died for you, who took upon himself all your sin and all your wrongdoing. And I can remember in my own life, when I gave my life to Jesus, he just thank God. I said, thank you, Father, for what you've done for me in, in your son, Jesus. And look what I got back in return. Look what you got back in return. Look what you've got back in return. A blessed life. An eternal future guaranteed. It's a done deal stamped with a seal of the Holy Ghost. The power and strength to live the life that God has given you. To live that life that Jesus said, I have come that you would have life, a life to the full. The inner presence of the Spirit in our life. Can it get any better? Praise God. Let me say, let me put it this way. Your initial thankfulness has brought about a tremendous increase and blessing in your life. From those early days when you first accepted Jesus and said, thank you, Father. Look at the tremendous increase that you and I have received in our life as we thanked him continually 
throughout our lives. May we never forget, may we never stop thanking God our Father for the wonderful gift he has given to us in Christ Jesus. And so in closing, let me remind us through the scriptures, Ephesians 5 verse 20 says to us, Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church that Jesus is building is a thankful church, a church that praises his name continually. And let's all meditate on the verses we've read this morning. Let's all ponder on these verses this week. Psalm 67 verse 5. May the people praise you, God. May all the people praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. Well, let's just pray together today. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you today for your presence in our life. We thank you, Father, that our thankfulness brings about increase in blessing in our life. And we want to thank you today for Jesus. We want to thank you today for your son. And we just say, Father, that Lord, as we come before you, that you would undertake for us, that you would lead, guide and direct us in, in all things. Father, we love and thank you today. We pray especially for those less fortunate than ourselves, those who aren't able to meet with you, those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And I pray for anyone who doesn't know Jesus, who's, who's hearing these words, that they would bow the knee and say yes to Jesus, invite him into their life, and receive the incredible blessing as they say, thank you, God, for your son who gave his life for me. For you so loved the world that you gave. You gave your only begotten Son so that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Father, we love and thank you. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace, for your compassion, forgiveness and encouragement in our life. Today, go before us. Prepare the way that we would walk in your fullness and grace. We love you and thank you. And we all said... Amen. Praise God. Well, have a great day. Thank you.